Today we'll be looking at power sharing and revenue allocation. Being joined by Dr. Bamidele Olajide, a lecturer at the Department of Political Science, uh, Political Science, I beg your pardon, University of Lagos, and a public affairs analyst. Dr. Olajide, glad to have you joining us on Early Extinct this morning. Yeah, thank you very much for having me on your program. All right. Now, let's start with your thought or your perspective about the present structure that we have in Nigeria when it comes to power sharing and revenue allocation. What would be your submission? Well, <clears throat> uh, as we all know that uh, Nigeria went uh, the federal way uh, via the 1954 Little Thing Constitution. Um, and since uh, that time, we have uh, been uh, practicing that uh, system of government. And uh, when you look at it, uh, the uh, history of federalism in Nigeria has been uh, a topsy, uh, a checkered one, if I may say, uh, in the sense that uh, it has gone through several phases, uh, military rule, uh, civilian rule, and uh, since 1999, you know, we are having, uh, we've been having uh, a system that has been severely bastardized by uh, long years of military rule, such that uh, a lot of uh, what I would call federal anomalies are now uh, being seen as normal. So when we are talking about power sharing and the revenue uh, allocation, then we'll be talking, uh, we'll be discuss, discussing uh, a history of uh, crisis of federalism in Nigeria. Because um, uh, we have uh, a system, a structure in which the federal government is so strong, is so big, uh, so large, uh, in contrast to the state. And, uh, when you look at the 1999 Constitution, uh, which is very recently, I think some months ago, about 68 functions uh, were allocated to the federal government, and uh, give, uh, the Act Constitution gave residues to the state. And uh, you wonder how, how the states are going to develop. You wonder how the states are going to contribute to national development because the idea of federalism is that uh, both the central government and the constituent units uh, do have uh, equal and coordinate powers to, uh, to, to manage the affairs that are given by the constitution to them. So um, you wonder what the state wants to manage when the, the, the federal government has you know, is overbearing as more than enough things to do. Uh, that is my summary of uh, the crisis of uh, federalism in Nigeria since my All right, let's look at um, the issue of resource control and resource allocation in the federal system that we have. Uh, currently, we know that uh, there are states in Nigeria where oil, crude oil, is gotten from, and there's a derivation principle to that. But there are other minerals found in different states, and then there's been an advocacy of con states controlling resources that they have. Under the kind of federal system that Nigeria practices, how would that happen, or what should be the approach, given what is already existing and an ideal federal system? Federal system. Federal system. Federal system. Thank you. Uh, what we have is a mockery of federalism, federalism, like I told you. And uh, when you hear some people telling us that we should revert back to the 1963 uh, Constitution, uh, I want to suppose that those people know what exactly they are talking about because that was a constitution that gave uh, the regions the power to manage the resources uh, within their territories. However, uh, we find out that uh, since 19, the 1979 constitution 
uh, you know, give uh, you know a clause of uh, derivation principle of not more or less than 30 percent to the states, and uh, you know our politicians are funny as they are. Uh, they just expect it at 13 uh, percent, and uh, we have been having issues over the years of jacking this up because. Um, for example, when when you look at the Niger Delta, Nigeria makes, I uh, mean, it's a, it's economic mainstay from that region, and that I mean, it's so 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 disastrous that uh, that uh, region doesn't earn more than 13 percent from the large deposit of oil that could you know that could transform the lives of men and women, everybody in that region. So. You find that rather than uh, promoting uh, prosperity, our uh, federalism uh, has been promoting uh, currently has been promoting a uh, crisis in the in the states. Um, so you know it is just unfortunate the situation that we have found ourselves uh, because uh, the states, uh, the states lack uh, as it is now the states even lack the well we do you know to 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 make any appreciable gains to make any appreciable uh, resources from the vast uh, whatever deposit that they, they have in their i mean within their territory and uh, you know uh, we'll be talking of uh, the diversification like you mentioned uh, Gould in Ocho State in Zamfara, in, uh, in uh, uh, you know, across the country, Kogi State, you know, we have seen in George, we have coal in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Ugu, and, uh, and uh, we have bitumen in Ondo State. You know, all of these uh, non-oil uh, mineral resources, I mean, would have, I mean, these are things that we could transform our economy, but I see this exigency by a successive government uh, into diversifying uh, into, I mean, into the economy to absorb uh, these mineral resources, you know, so that states can, I mean, those states can also begin to earn a derivation from, uh, from them. And uh, you know, it's, it's just unfortunate. It's just unfortunate. It's just unfortunate. Thank you. All right. In recent times, there's been advocacy for restructuring as far as, you know, power sharing and revenue allocation, you know, are concerned. Now, I would like you to talk to us. What is your own understanding of restructuring? Do you think Nigeria is due for restructuring? And if that is going to happen, if you agree that Nigeria needs restructuring, what pattern and what could be the mechanism for it to work out? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, restructuring has been a, a topic in Nigerian federalism since uh, day one. As a matter of fact, even before Nigeria adopted the federal method in 19, okay, maybe uh, just immediately, so a few years after the adoption of federal the federal method in 1954 by 1958 you know the willing constitution you know that was set up to consider the the, the the possibility and the desirability of creation of states you know that commission go away you know the, the, the commission uh mismanaged the opportunity to 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 restructure nigeria for good and uh, since that time we have uh, been having issues on, you know, how to restructure Nigeria. And, uh, you know, what we all know that Nigeria started its federalism on a very terrible path in which uh, a region of Nigeria was bigger than the two other regions and later the three other regions put together. And, uh, you know, this, <laughs> that uh, north-sided uh, uh, arrangement, you know, created the problem that uh, we are having today. So, and uh, 
uh, we've been having constitutional conferences. We had one in 1977-78. We had one in 1995. Uh, we had one during the Obasanjo uh, administration. And uh, President, uh, former President Jonathan also organized one. And uh, it is just unfortunate that we couldn't make some success of uh, of uh, of uh, restructuring through uh, these mechanisms. Rather, what we have been having is, is, uh, is the creation of states, you know, the balkanization of, uh, of the existing structure uh, to even make them weaker because the, the, the smaller the states, the more states you have, the stronger the federal government. And, uh, and I want to assume, you know, I want that some people, perhaps some states, uh, groups, are benefiting from this uh, uh, lopsided arrangement because uh, the north, as of today, is still bigger than the south, both in terms of uh, land space and the number of states. Uh, we have 19 states in the north and we have 17 in the south. That lopsidedness uh, has not been addressed. So for me, um, we have uh, a, a, a serious geopolitical uh, zone arrangement, which I think is perfect for whatever uh, restructuring we want to do. I think uh, the northwest, north central, northeast, southwest, southeast, and uh, south south arrangement is a is just a perfect one for now, because uh, when if we can uh, restructure Nigeria uh, along that uh, line, and then uh, the, the 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 zones or the states or regions, whatever name we choose to call uh, the product. Uh, they will be stronger, they have greater clout, you know, to, to, to withstand the federal government uh, than uh, what we have now. Only a few states can, you know, can withstand uh, the federal government, uh, maybe Lagos, and, uh, maybe Rivers, and, and uh, not even Kano, not even Kano, because when we are talking of uh, restructuring, mind you, we are also talking, I mean, invariably about... Uh, uh, revenue allocation, we re revenue generation, and the, uh, the, the, the the ability of some national governments to generate their revenue. So you know um, that uh, this uh, zonal arrangement that we have now, I think is a good one. If we are serious and we want to do something, we can start from there. All right. Uh Still in that line of um, power sharing, and uh, you've talked about how the states should be able to uh, maybe stand uh, side by side the federal government in terms of being independent. Let's look at local government autonomy, because the closest government to the people is government at the grassroots level, which is the local government. But what we've seen over time is that local governments are dependent on state government for funding and even in terms of authority. How do we achieve that and what will be uh, the process to that? There have been talks about it. Some states uh, have been pushing very hard for it, but we still find that that has not come to, pack to, to be. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, well, let me disappoint you. Uh, or, okay, let me disappoint Nigeria. Uh, because uh, as a political scientist, I wouldn't uh, be part of that uh, bandwagon that uh, wants... Uh, this is uh, extreme autonomy for local government world over in federations. We know that uh, local governments are instruments in the hands of some national government, I mean, these regions now for development. So, if, for example, if local governments are autonomous of the state, who does the state govern? Okay, let's look at it. Who does the state govern? What we, are, what we can say is that the states should be mature enough to allow the local governments to function optimally, you know, without, you know, without, I mean, until it's apparent into what local governments uh, need and uh, uh, to do. Because, you know, fine, we are a great federalist, I mean, tradition. And when you look at the 1999 constitution, for example, there is a lot of confusion as to the operation of local government. First, the constitution gives 
you know, fought for the state to create local government. However, is that we want a rigid written constitution, you know, so for example, uh, during the Obasanjo administration, the second stage on uh, uh, the then governor Bola Tidubu attempted to create local governments, you know, the LCD is that we now have and that case is, you know, went on to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court affirmed uh, the powers of states to create local governments. However, is that how many states, let's ask ourselves, how many states have since then created local governments? You know, this conclusion that we have uh, uh, not ourselves in, you know, uh, I think we just need to we need to uh, we need to calm down. Let me just put it that way. We need to calm down. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that uh, states uh, do not allow governments to operate. However, theoretically, you know, as a political scientist, local governments are part and parcel of the states. Well, okay, let's compare it to the United States. The Tenth Amendment to the American Constitution, uh, which is called Dillon's Rule, Local governments, you know, squarely in the hands of the state. And what does the Dillon's do state? The Dillon's do state that any power not given to federal government by the Constitution shall be exercised by the people. And what does it mean by the people in the American uh, constitutional parliament? It means the states, you know. And when you look at other traditions, you look at Canada, you look at Germany, you look at Australia, I mean, these are people that uh, we pattern our system of governance uh, after. So, you know, uh, the, the, for me, the, all this noise about uh, local government autonomy are not in good faith. They are just uh, employed, in my opinion, to weaken, to further weaken the state. Because once you take the local government uh, out of the hands of the state, then how does the state function? What does the state, what does, does the state do? I think we just need to ask ourselves the, the question. And the problem is that our political elites, the political class, you know, just feel that they can do policy, you know, haphazardly. By not, uh, and uh, what they do is not to invite people who know about these processes to, to contribute. A political scientist who knows his onions would tell you that, you know, this extreme local government uh, autonomy that we've been clamoring for in Nigeria would not augur well for states. It is just to, I mean, it drives Nigeria more uh, to a uh, unitary state than rather than entrenching our federal system. Now, let's look at the present uh, constitution. Uh, a lot of stakeholders feel, you know, the present constitution needs to be reviewed, needs to be reviewed. And some even argue that uh, their preference for the 1963 constitution. Now, do you think it's necessary for Nigeria to have another constitutional conference or national conference? The last one that was, heard, was held was that uh, in 2015 when pre former President Jonathan was in power. Do you think there's need for another one in order to be able to review the constitution, as he argued? Thank you. Uh, thank, you. thank you very much. Uh, resource wise, that in terms of resources expended on uh, constitutional conference, I am not a supporter of uh, any new constitutional conference because we keep wasting resources. So, as we did the same thing uh, that the uh, Nikitobi uh, did at the uh, constitutional conference of 1995, you know, the same thing, uh, the Jonathan uh, conference uh, organized the conference. The same, so we, 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 we keep uh, wasting money on this issue. However, is that like when I started uh, this interview, I did mention that those who clamored for a return to the 1953 constitution knew what they are talking about because um, that constitution, that constitution gave the states, you know, the, 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 the that the requisite powers that they need to function effectively as subnational government within the Nigerian federal structure. Uh, 
I am not uh, oblivious of the fact that uh, federality or federation yeah, is a product of continuous discussion, is a process of uh, continuous negotiation. So uh, it's not that uh, I am not saying, I mean, I am saying that uh, a constitutional conference is not necessary to further debate and argue uh, about the future of federal practice and governance in Nigeria. However, is that I I not know who, yes, I not know who that it is uh, going to bring out anything, anything uh, actionable from us. Uh, because uh, with that Jonathan uh, National Conference, I was thinking, you know, that uh, and, uh, like many Nigerians, that uh, perhaps eventually we have uh, a president who has the political will to implement uh, things and make sure that Nigeria federalism, I mean, the Nigerian federalism uh, takes the proper shape that it should have. So, you know, uh, from an economic point of view, there is no point, there is no point. And uh, since we have a template back uh, in the, you know, in the day, 1963, I think we should just revert back to that and uh, with some uh, modifications as to the six uh, geopolitical zone uh, pattern that I mentioned the other time. I think with that, the Nigerian federal system will be fine. Okay, let's come to uh, the exclusive to list. Yeah. There have been some um, advocacy that uh, the exclusive list should be devolved. Some items should be moved to the concurrent list. Uh, top on that agenda is security, under which we have the issue of state policing. We also have the issue of mining and even public holidays. Some feel that uh, the government is too generous in that aspect. What's your take? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, you know, uh, we have we have issues in Nigeria. We have issues. Um, I mentioned that the 1999 Constitution, until very recently, had uh, these eight functions, you know, including functions that are performed by local governments in other provisions, like prison. You know, why can't the state, for example, manage its own prison? A state that has uh, the fifth largest economy in Africa, richer than many countries in Africa. You know, <laughs> it's so funny. It's, so, it, 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 it's very funny. So, um, thank God uh, that uh, the outgoing Bavaria administration uh, has started that devolution. At least uh, now, according to that uh, amendment, states can now generate. Uh, electricity, things can now go into rails. Uh, yes, we still need to do more. You know, we need to, to evolve uh, this power. And the, the aspect that annoys me as a Nigerian, as, a, as, a, uh, as an academic, a political scientist, is uh, that uh, area of policing. Uh, you know, the idea of federality, of devolution of power, is for efficiency. Now, We've seen over the last uh, day, uh, last decade and a half that the current system is not working and it cannot work. It cannot work. Uh, when I say this is that when in other climes of the world, there are campus police, you know, there are, there are campus police formation in, on campuses in, in, in other federations. Nigeria has no want to maintain that, you know, on NLD unitary federal structure that started in 1958 uh, through the Willits Constitution that I mentioned. So, um, uh, it's not going to work, and that is why we have a, a proliferation of a crisis, of conflicts, you know, uh, the, 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 the crisis, the banditry, even the Boko Haram crisis was a function of the failure of this unitary policy system that uh, we are practice, is practicing within a federal, a federal structure. Now, let's look at it. I was in a conference or uh, in a public lecture uh, in 2011 
yes, in 2011 or 2012, I, I can't, I can't, uh, I mean, uh, point out now, but that conference was organized by the Opafemi Awulowo Institute for Governance, Good Governance and Public Policy. Um, I told you that the Social Center we know the Congregus here. And uh, that lecture was delivered by uh, the former governor of Niger State, Babangiri Aliyu, who was the governor that the, uh, the, the leader of governors in Nigeria at, uh, at that time. So, uh, Dr. Harold Fayemi was also there. He was the leader for that uh, public lecture. And uh, when Babangiri Aliyu finished the lecture, the governor Fayemi told him, at you, look at you. You did your PhD, I can't remember how this speech spoke now. I know one American university. You did your PhD, and in that school that you went where you did your PhD, they are campus police. Why are you leaving the North to reject the idea of state police? You know? The silence in that hall was so loud that you would conclude that, uh, you know, the sentiment put into this idea, I mean, the, 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 the antagonism against the police by the North, I mean, it's illogical. Sorry, I'm not uh, trying to uh, insult the sensibility of any any group here. However, is that, uh, truth be told, is that we are not uh, just doing enough. We are not doing well at all about, uh, about uh, this thing. So for me, I think the best thing is that we should organize, uh, we should work, of course, we can have federal police because we can't do, I mean, without that as a federation. However, like that, let the states run their policy system. Let the states run their policy system. I think it would be let the local governments run their policy system. And the reason is this. For example, uh, 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 in the Yaba, I mean LCD, or let's say local Lagos, Greenland, local government. Maybe there are criminals there. And you want to bring somebody from Iko uh, Tepene, or you want to bring somebody from Ibordu or Manu Fashi, uh, who is an inspector in the Nigerian police, to come and track crime in the, you know, in the corners of Bariga. I mean, this, I mean, it's just, it's just impracticable, it's just impossible. However, is that when you run state police, then you will be, you know, with an idea of branch, uh, in the run pool, because you are the only people who know about the culture of the place, who understand the environment, who understand the dynamics of crime, you know, in, 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 across the nation, then with the patch, you can you, you, you gradually see uh, a reduction in the in, in, in the, the rate of crime across across the country. Uh, thank you. All right. Now let's look at the issue of power sharing. Um, you agree with me that since 1999. Uh, zoning has been, you know, the practice has been the structure being adopted by most political parties in Nigeria. And the question is, where has this led Nigeria? You know, how do you just oppose this with the argument for the need to elect leaders based on, you know, merit and the qualification rather than looking at, you know, their ethnic affiliation or whether zone, whatever zone they come from? Ah, well, uh, I think uh, I remember for us all this uh, talking about the 1993 uh, presidential election won by the late MP Aviola and said uh, that Nigeria was close to nation B and that statement, that word, nation B, you know, I was fascinated uh, a lot by it. And uh, what does this mean? Is that we have never, we have never been at any point in Nigeria a nation, and uh, with that election, we had a, a a a singular opportunity on our hands to become a nation. So uh, it is because we are not a nation 
And that is why uh, we do a lot of this. I mean, zone in general, yes. Uh, we understand that the Constitution has a federal character, uh, a federal character mandate that is to take care of the, 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 the sensibilities across the country in terms of appointment and co. Fine. Maybe that at the pay is that uh, zoning kills marriage. You know, it does not allow for marital pressure. Um, you know, governance is about the very best. And sorry, let me take you to political theory a bit. You know, Tito is of the opinion that uh, the, the philosopher king, that is the best intellectually, the best in terms of knowledge, should man positions of power. Now, if the best is from the north, and because we need to zone, then we zone to the west. You know, you have brought us of the opportunity of being served by the best brains. So, zoning, zoning kills uh, excellent governance. It kills excellent governance. So, um, I am not against uh, having people, you know, that for appointments for every state of the federation to be represented whoever in critical positions including the president including the president uh, as the presidential position including the governorship we should always go for our best we should go for our best i mean sorry to say it but you know why should we by now see eight months also, after elections, we are still grappling with the certificate of the president. I mean, it's terrible. Honestly, it's terrible. So, for me, for me, if the north, I mean, if the, the best is from the north, you know, let's go for it. I mean, that person. If it's from the east, of course, let's go for that person. It is because we are not a nation. It is because we have not made a nation out of the very you know, the many groups that formed the Nigerian state that uh, we are all clamoring for for for, for zoning and uh, well you may not also be able to I mean, blame the people in this because a section of the country has always had it I mean had their way when it comes to leadership issues you know so uh, when people shout or zoning well, maybe we can understand them, but it shouldn't be. It's an aberration. It's an aberration. We want to compete with the rest, you know, with our mates, you know, uh, in the world. We want to compete with other countries in the world. And if other countries are putting their best and you are shouting zoning, 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 then where is the development coming from?